Welcome back to Read With Me. Happy Remembrance Day! Today we're going to be reading, it began with a page, how Yoji Fuwa drew the way. Let's begin. It began with a page, how Yoji Fuwa drew the way. It began with a page, bright and beginning. It began with a mother writing a poem, and a father working in a field. In a field and a little girl named Joya, drawing a picture. It was 1913, and Joya was five years old. And if you see here, it's real pictures. Her mom, her mom and her and her sister, and that's her dad. That morning, her mama said, Oh, oh yeah, sleepyhead, it's going to be a busy day. And look at all the stuff she's doing. And look here. And it was. Right until nightfall. Mama's friends had came over. And they were full of talk. We sailed to America with our best chemo to see what we could be. Such disappointment. We need the vote. We need rights. You, you are... I mean, Joa held her rice bowl and listened with curious ears. Did Joya know what she wanted to be? Not yet. What she did know was that she liked to draw. She loved to feel the pencil in her hand, the dance, the dance and glide of a line. How a new color could change everything. A bright, a bright splash of yellow, a sleepy stroke of blue. Every, every day she started with an empty page and filled it with pictures. And look at all this, it's so nice and pretty. At home, surrounded by drawing tools and books, Anything was possible, but at school, jo Joya didn't feel that way. At school, no one said, that girl sure can draw. No one noticed her color pencils or box of paints. No one even noticed when she moved away. Joya's new home was a fishing village near San Pedro, California. A haven for Japanese Americans. A new life roaming with her friends. Joya felt weightless and free. A fairy ride away at her high school. Joya sometimes still felt uh, invisible among her classmates. And look, all the students are talking except for Joya. She's just painting a picture. But her drawing caught the attention of two teachers. Who was this girl whose eyes missed nothing? Who could sketch rivers and boats and birds like a dream? Miss Cole and Miss Bloom saw the energy in each line of her drawings. Zoya was too poor to go to art school, but Miss Cole found money to pay her to pay her way. Zoya was nervous to leave her home for a buzz and bustle of downtown Los Angeles. Not many girls and even few fewer Asian American girls went to college in 19 26. But Zoya was determined. She sketched statues, flowers, and faces. Her sketchbook filled up one after another. And look, all the people are sketching, and she is the only girl. Hungry to know more, Zoya set off Zoya set off for Japan, the land of her ancestors to study traditional Japanese brush painting but the teachers were were full of rules and look 
look the way she holds it and there's different ways to hold it. Instead, she traveled around the country doing her own learning, wood blocks, carving tools, ink made from stopped, stooped. She lost herself in the Prince of Haroshiga, Otanero, and Hokkish, and floated in a beautiful sea of Kimon. Travel fed her dreams, but back in America, it was time to earn money. For the next few years, Zoya worked long days painting murals and drawing for magazines. In 1941, she was offered a temporary job designing books for Walt Disney's studio in New York, a city filled with art and art artists. It was hard for Zoya to leave her family, especially her mother. Little did she know, little did she know things were about to get harder still. In the early 19, in early 1942, terrible things were happening. Bombs and gunfires rocked the world. America was at war with Japan. Yoya and was shocked to discover that anyone who looked Japanese or had a Japanese name was now su suspected of being the enemy. Japanese Americans living in the West Coast were ordered to leave their homes, their schools, their pets, their everyone. Zoya, along with other, others living in the East Coast, were told to stay where she was. On the West Coast, families prepared to leave, leave try, tried to sell their, their large belongings, larger belongings, like cars and furniture to junk dealers. But they were offered only pennies. I won't sell, said Zoya's mother. You. Instead, she set everything ablaze. She's setting all her stuff on fire. Zoya's family was sent to a prison camp far, far away from their home. Zoya's heart was broken. For the next three years, the world sh shrank becoming tiny and terrible. Now when she gazed at a white paper, no pictures would come. Zoya mailed her family letters letters, and sent gifts for her new nephew born in the camp. But her heart would not mend. So she's in East Coast and they're in the West Coast, I think. Eventually, Joya began to draw again. She, she drew to keep her worries still and to save money her family would need. When angry strangers saw her as an enemy, drawing comforted her. When the world felt gray, color lifted her. She wondered, could art comfort and lift others too? When the war ended, the Fujikas were released. With no house or savings to call their own, they had to start again. For Joya, the next 15 years passed swiftly. There were stamps to create, store windows to decorate, and children's books of poetry to illustrate. There were two poodles who needed loving. Now, now when Zoya walked around the city con collecting ideas for her pictures, she began to notice little changes around her. 
they are a shopping situation. Okay. Still, there was much that hadn't changed. At the library and bookshop, and bookshops, it was the same old stories. Mothers in aprons and fathers with pipes and a world of only white children. Joya knew a book could hold more and do more. A book, she told her poodles, can be anything that anyone imagined it to be. Zoya knew what she wanted to do. Every day she started with an empty page and filled it with pictures and words. When her book was done, she gave it to a publisher. What did they say? Babies! Look at all these cute babies. Chubby-cheeked, squ squat-legged, bouncy bottom bottomed babies, naughty, nice, oh so busy, toddling, crawling babies. But the publisher said no. No by mixing white babies and black babies. Okay, it was not done in early 1960s America. A country with laws that separated people by skin color. So, see, there are white ch children and black children, and the publisher didn't want that. Okay. But Zoya would not budge. She closed her eyes and remembered all the time she had felt unseen and unwelcomed. She looked at the pub publisher in the eye and said, It should not be that way. Not out there on the streets. Not here on this page. We need to break the rules. Then she waited for them to rethink their decision. The babies waited too and waited. But the babies c cannot wait. Finally, the publisher said yes. And the book did well, very well. Babies loved it. So Zoya kept going. Welcoming king, kids from the edges, from the corners, from the sh shadows. Joya let each child find a place. Boys and girls freed from pink or blue. Sharing jokes, joys, and mishaps and bruises. From strolling out across the bright paper, ready for each bigger, better world. And this is her, and this is her. Uh, she died. Um, she died in New York three years after celebrating her 90th birthday. And these are her poodles here, and these are some other pictures on her. And that is her story. I hope you enjoyed reading this book with me and make sure to subscribe and hit that like button for more videos. Bye!